Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Daniel Gonzalez, and I'm your legislative director for the Texas Association of Realtors. And welcome to our, I guess, first ever legislative preview for the 85th Texas Legislative Session, uh, which begins in January of next year. What we want to do this morning is give you just a preview of what we are looking at, uh, what your association uh, may be looking at for, for next session, kind of give you little tidbits of what we, what we see happening uh, in the legislative process, and also hopefully uh, give you a little inside information. I know everyone uh, just woke up really early to be you know, on, this, uh, on this Facebook Live seminar, uh, so thank you for waking up with us, and um, uh, we'll get started here. But first, I wanted to kind of give you just a little brief um, a background, just as, uh, as our thousands of viewers continue to, to log into the system. But I wanted to just kind of give you just a brief background of, of how we do things here at your association, the Texas Association of Realtors. Uh, you may have already seen uh, this magazine, which probably just hit your mailboxes, we believe, on Saturday. And we know that you, ch you, you check your mail every single day, just like most Americans and most Texans uh, do. Uh, but we wanted to, uh, hopefully you were able to see this magazine uh, and read it uh, from, from uh, end to end, from cover to cover. But in it, we actually did uh, write a legislative preview uh, of some of the issues that we're going to be looking at for next session. But I wanted to just kind of make sure that you, are, uh, you understand and just reiterate that these issues that we are going to be looking at for next session don't come from me, Daniel Gonzalez, in my office you know, here at 1115 San Jacinto Boulevard, Austin, Texas. We have a whole process of public policy committees, uh, subcommittees that actually look at all of these issues. Uh, they're, they're, these subcommittees are comprised of all realtor uh, volunteers all across the state uh, who dedicate their time and attention to these issues, and they are the ones who make the decisions on, on where your association should be on one issue or another. So, again, I just wanted to make sure, I, and I started with that because... We do sometimes get some comments here that, well, it's, this, is, this legislative agenda or the legislative agenda is staff-driven, and that is absolutely 100% you know, incorrect. So just wanted to get that out there uh, to you. If you're just joining us again, my name is Daniel Gonzalez, and I'm your legislative director for the Texas Association of Realtors. I do like to tell legislators, by the way, as a in little inside joke, that you know, I represent a small mom-and-pop organization of 114,000 members and that usually gets a little chuckle, you know, from, from legislators because uh, there's nothing small and mom and pop about a large organization uh, as ours. But uh, it's a, been a privilege to, to work for you, and thank you for having me for now. Uh, going on 17 years ha here at the Texas Association, Texas Association of Realtors. Um, let's get started on some of the issues, um, and then we'll open it up for some questions. Maybe we'll go for about 10 or 15 minutes, kind of around there. Uh, and then we'll let open it up for some questions and, and see what you have uh, uh, in store for me for, for, uh, for the last part of this uh, webinar. But some of the issues that we've been looking at, obviously, are kind of some long-term uh, infrastructure needs uh, for the state of Texas. About three years ago, four years ago, your leadership for the association asked us, your staff, to start looking at some long-term infrastructure needs for Texas. Things like roads, education, uh, school finance, education, water, things of that sort things that we absolutely need for the future uh, uh, of Texas. And I know that everyone on, the, on this webinar will agree with this statement that we need, a, we, we need to ensure that the Texas of tomorrow is a heck of a lot better than the Texas of today. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is to ensure that we have a good uh, transportation network system in Texas, to ensure that we have a clean uh, and reliable and stable water source as well as energy source but also more importantly to make sure that education, our K through 12 system, that they actually are educating kids through our K through 12 system to ensure that they either have a marketable skill or can indeed move on to that next two or four year uh, uh, higher uh, education level, whatever it may be. So the reason why you know, we, we are involved with education, well, I'll put it this way, we do get a lot of questions or, or people shake their head, why in the world will the Texas Association of Realtors be involved in education. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why, and it's very easy. If we don't ensure, again, that these kids have a marketable, marketable skill or can go to a, a, a college or university somewhere, if, they, if we don't prepare them, they will never be able to uh, get a job where they can then afford 
their first home and qualify for a loan. And if they can never qualify for a loan or afford you know, their first home, you, the realtor, you will never have them as a customer or client. So that's why we are involved uh, in, in, uh, in education efforts at the, at the state capitol. For many of you uh, who uh, are just joining us, again, my name is Daniel Gonzalez. I'm the legislative director for the Texas Association of Realtors. Uh, before we get into some of the other issues, I want to make sure that you know kind of a little tidbit uh, that many people don't know. But the Texas legislature will be meeting next month on January 10th of 2017. And many people aren't aware of this, but the Texas Constitution actually says, and I know that many of you already wrote, you know, read your Constitution this morning, so thank you for doing that. But the Constitution says that the legislature cannot take any action for the first 60 days of session. As a reminder, session uh, only is 140 days in length. So if you take 60 days out of the 140, uh, 140 days, there's only 80 days left that they can actually do something. Uh, the legislature can only debate a bill before 60 days on the, on the House or Senate floor if it's deemed an emergency by the governor. Also, you have to remember that the legislature does not meet during the weekends until the very end of session. So that's another 20 days that you take off of that, of, off of the calendar. So in reality, the legislature only has 60 days to do the business of Texas. 60 days that you heard that right. And that's not a lot of time for what many people have considered Texas being the 10th largest economy in the world. So just imagine that the 10th largest economy in the world in 60 days is passing a two-year budget um, for, for, for that economy. It's just really something to, to think about. Some of the other issues that we're looking at the, at the association level uh, really deals with school education, school finance, as well as property taxes and appraisal reform. And all of those really do go together. Uh, so when you talk about one, you talk about all the others. And I kind of think of it as this. Think of it as a large balloon. As you push on one side of the balloon, the other part of the balloon kind of expands out. That's what happens when you talk about school finance, school education, uh, and property taxes and appraisals. But one thing that we are, have been concerned with and continue to be concerned with at the association level is the vilification of appraisal increases by local officials as well as by state legislators. That really is concerning to us because people, in our opinion, do not purchase a piece of property hoping for that value of the property to go down. I asked uh, just, just on Monday, while I was in Houston, and I asked a group of about 150 Houston realtors, show me your customer or client who asked you to, to find a piece of property that ensures that the value of it is going to go down for the next five years. It just doesn't happen. We know that people buy property, real property, in order to build their, their wealth, and that's one of the greatest indicators uh, of uh, wealth indicators for, for individuals in Texas and around the world is you know, owning property. But people vilify appraisal increases. And what I mean by that is you've seen the headlines. You, you've seen uh, other you know, press releases out there that says the reason why your tax bill is going up is because appraisals have gone up by 8 or 9 or 10% uh, this year. Well, that is completely 100% false. I kind of like to say that that is fake news. But the reason why people's tax liability continues to go up every single year is not because appraisals are going up. It's, it's because tax rates are not lowered enough by local taxing jurisdictions, by cities, counties, and other special taxing jurisdictions. So just recently, we've seen a number of articles come out from uh, major uh, newspaper periodicals here in Texas that basically say that your tax bill has gone up because your uh, because appraisal values have increased. Actually, just this morning, there was another piece, I think, in the Austin American Statesman that Austin taxpayers uh, are paying more in property taxes because they live in a robust real estate economy because appraisal values have increased. And again, that's just not the case. It's all on the tax rate. I bring this up because, again, it really concerns us that when appraisal increases are vilified, then potentially the next step uh, could be coming. And what I mean by that is, if you are going to limit the appraisal increase for ad valorem taxation for property taxes, and, you know, and we did that actually in 1997, some legislators would like to, to lower that, that percentage cap on homesteads, but if you allow the government to artificially place a limit on, ad valor, for, on, on appraisal increases for ad valorem taxation, in my mind, the next step is the government coming in 
with Washington style, DC style uh, government limitations on how much you can sell your property for uh, and how much money you can make on that. Now, some people call me crazy, and that's absolutely that's fine, but we have certainly seen other states uh, do some really crazy things, and, and that may be the next step here in Texas. So we need to make sure that there aren't any artificial government uh, controls on, on appraisals in Texas. We need to look about uh, on the tax rates. And one thing that we have done here at the Texas Association of Realtors is create a new endeavor, a new education endeavor called the hiddenpropertytax.com. And I hope that many of you, and I know many of you who are, are, are viewing this uh, today or this morning, you've already visited hiddenpropertytax.com. You've actually made that as your homepage uh, for, for your, your browser, and thank you for doing that. But this is an effort, an education effort by us, by your leadership, and by your association to make sure that property owners as well as realtors know more about the appraisal process and the tax rate setting process. We need to ensure that of the thousands upon thousands of people who go to the appraisal district to protest their value, that the same number of people absolutely also show up during the tax rate setting process at your city, county, commissioner's court hearing, or any other uh, tax and jurisdiction ta tax rate setting hearing to make sure that those tax rates are lowered enough. Things, we're looking at terms on the hidden property tax like what is the effective tax rate? What is the rollback rate? How can I participate more in the process? We have a great three-minute three, three minute video uh, on our website uh, that kind of gives you a brief, brief background uh, of, the, of the appraisal process and tax rate setting process. The reason I bring all of these things up is because, again, the legislature will be looking at, at these issues for next time. There's, there's already been over 600 bills. I think this morning, I think it was up to 800 bills this morning that were already filed. And right now, we are tracking about 350 of those. Historically speaking, the legislature will probably file anywhere between six and 7,000 bills. And of those bills, we will probably uh, track about a third of them. Some, one, one little piece of tidbit, again, if you're just joining us, on our first ever Facebook Live uh, webinar is of all the bills that are filed, your association, we absolutely read every single word. We look at every single punctuation mark. We look at everything about that bill because we want to make sure that we're not missing anything and we want to make sure that you and your livelihood, the real estate industry, is indeed protected uh, through the legislative process. One of the funny jokes that we've always, always hear is whenever the legislature, legislature is in town, that, you know, protect your home and your property because they're not safe. Uh, and that's absolutely right sometimes and most of the time. Thankfully, our forefathers here in Texas uh, did limit legislative sessions to only 140 days every two years. And that's a great protection that's been in place um, uh, for, for all of us in the Texas Constitution. Some of the other things that the legislature will be looking at is the Texas budget. You know, one thing that you probably have heard on the campaign trail is, you know, you're a, a senator or a legislator uh, or Texas House member say, elect me because for the last five years or last six years, I have balanced the budget for the state of Texas every single session. Well, here's a little inside information for you. They have to. We don't have deficit spending here in Texas. The Texas Constitution requires that the budget be balanced. This is not Washington, D.C. This is Austin, Texas. And this is the state of Texas, and we do have a balanced budget. So one little tidbit for you as you, uh, as you head off to your, your uh, mid-morning meetings as well as your lunch meetings, go ahead and throw that out to your customer and client, see if they are able to answer that question um, about the balanced budget uh, requirement in the Texas Constitution. But the budget is kind of lean right now. Many of you probably saw an article, I think, two days ago where the state con you know, controller, Glenn Hager, kind of warned... Uh, the legislature of not impending budget and, uh, perils, but certainly kind of asking the legislature to potentially be aware of some of the things that are happening in, here in Texas uh, at the state econ in, in the state economy, but also looking how the global economy as well impacts our economy here in Texas. So if you recall, it wasn't that long ago, just two years ago, when the legislature came in and they had a lot of money uh, in the savings account, and they absolutely passed some tax relief last time. Some things, some some uh, issues that we absolutely uh, uh, approved and supported last time 
but this session in 2017, uh, the budget, you know, the numbers look a little lean uh, or leaner than, than they have in the past. So it's really going to be interesting to see what the legislature does. They will indeed pass, you know, a, a two-year budget. The joke around Austin, though, is are they going to do it in 140 days? Are they going to pass a budget in 140 days, or are we going to be here during the summer uh, uh, to pass a budget in a special session or sessions? Um, so, we'll, you know, it remains to be seen. But I remain confident in our, in our conservative Texas legislature that they will pass a two-year budget. It indeed uh, will be below uh, the spending cap that was approved a couple of weeks ago by the Legislative Budget Board, uh, and it will be a lean and mean budget. Will they talk about things like school finance? Absolutely they will. There will be some discussions on school finance. There will be some discussions on how, on how to help the taxpayers in the Houston Independent School District and the other school districts who currently pay recapture payments uh, to the state on how to lower those recapture payments and keep more tax dollars at the local level. Will something pass? Remains to be seen. I'm not really confident that anything will because, again, if you talk about school finance, if you want to do something that absolutely makes a difference in school finance, that's a lot of money that the legislature has to put into the system, billions upon billions of dollars. And I'm just not so sure that those billions of dollars currently exist uh, for the legislature to actually look at. Again, my name is Daniel Gonzalez, and I'm your legislative director uh, for the Texas Association of Realtors. If you're just joining us, we've just been talking uh, just kind of a little bit about the Texas legislative process our process, and some of the issues that we believe uh, the legislature will be looking at uh, next time around. Uh, Ward, I don't know if we have any questions um, from, the, from the audience, or we can keep on going, but I wanted to make sure that we give enough time uh, to people. It looks like they are coming in pretty fast. We'll kind of go through them a little bit, but one, go ahead, Ward, I'm sorry. Keep going. Start, Perfect. Start, start, start. And if you do have any questions, please uh, leave those questions, I believe, in the comment uh, a section of Facebook Live. Uh, we'll answer uh, those questions for you. Anything, any and all questions are indeed, uh, we ask you to put any and all questions in there. We're not afraid of any questions. We'll answer anything here at the Texas Association of Realtors. One other issue that I wanted to bring up to you as well uh, that does impact the real estate industry is title insurance. One of those uh, areas that, that ultimately, you know, we deal or you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis with your customers and clients. Title insurance, there, are, there, there has been some movement uh, of trying to deregulate the title insurance, and, and the use of the word deregulate is probably a little harsh or a little, a little too firm, but uh, essentially what we have been told is we wanna, they want to bring the same style of, of title regulation that California has into Texas. And, and I'm not so sure why you know, that's a good thing, but I'll tell you that typically the legislature doesn't uh, look kindly to uh, the, the policies and procedures of California, and they typically don't want to bring those same policies and procedures here to Texas. But one of the things that the, uh, some groups would like to do is deregulate title insurance and bring those rates down. Well, what, what we have seen is over the past maybe five or ten years, you know, title rates absolutely have come down in relation to the appraisal value of the property uh, that's under consideration. Uh, so those, those rates have indeed come down, and our subcommittee, one of our subcommittees, did review uh, this potential, uh, potential proposal, and ultimately uh, they decided to not support that type of proposal because of the unknown uh, unintended consequences that could uh, interrupt uh, the title um, industry as we know it today. The system works very well, and to try to do something that could, could put havoc into the system uh, during your closings really wasn't something that the subcommittee thought would be in the best interest of the real estate industry as well as the Texas economy as a whole. Uh, so that's one issue that we're going to be looking at as, we, uh, as the session, session starts on January 10th. And again, as a reminder, if you have any questions, please put those questions in the comment uh, section of Facebook Live. Ward, do we have any questions? Can you explain recapture for school districts? Absolutely. So every single school district is either a Chapter 41 or a Chapter 42 school district. And I'll make this really easy for you. Uh, just remember your, your, your basic math uh, class that you had in elementary. One is better than two. So if you're a Chapter 41 school district, you are a property wealthy district, meaning that your, your 
your property value in your area is very high and you can essentially have a, a tax rate that is somewhat low but generates a lot of money because of the high appraisal values. Or if you're in a Chapter 42 school district, that you tend to be in a poor school district, meaning that your appraisal values are lower than other parts of the state and your tax rate has to be higher to generate the same amount of revenue. So the state, in order to make sure that one school district does not have uh, more money than the other, they equalize uh, the wealth across uh, district boundaries. Um, and essentially, a school district will be deemed property rich or property poor. If you're property rich, then ultimately part of the property tax bill that you pay to your local independent school district goes to another school district to equalize, to bring up the, uh, uh, the money that is spent on a per student basis. So the recapture payments that currently, I think it's about maybe 20 or so districts, uh, don't quote me on that, uh, but certainly the, there's a handful of districts uh, that do make recapture payments to the state, and then the state then redistributes that money to the property poor districts to equalize their student funding. Uh, what can we expect to see that will affect uh, the way Texas licenses, sorry, anything TREC is the effect test licenses or anything to do with TREC coming up in the session? Sure, no, great question. You know, we always look at, at the, <clears throat> excuse me, at the Texas Real Estate Commission every single year, or every two years, pardon me, and we do work very closely with our Texas Real Estate Commission. Uh, they have a great staff over there, and great leadership. Uh, we always look at different issues that, as it relates to the licensure law uh, for Texas realtors to ensure that there's no outdated uh, measures in the, in the statute as well as we want to make sure that the consumer is protected in the transaction and make sure that, that we have a robust real estate economy uh, or industry here in Texas. Uh, we are still working on, on a few things, uh, dealing with the Real Estate Commission. Still don't know if we're going to take anything to the legislature uh, just yet, but we continue to work very closely with, the, with our friends at the Real Estate Commission and through our legislative management team here at the Texas Association of Realtors to, to make sure that we do things uh, right uh, by not only our licensees, but also consumers in Texas. Uh, where can someone get a copy of our legislative agenda for the 85th session? <coughs> Great question. So where can people get a copy of our, of our booklet? Uh, we absolutely um, will put the booklet on our website, texasrealestate.com. We, we are putting the final touches to it. Our executive board just met last week and, and, and uh, gave final approval to all of our policy positions. And uh, we have a great team here in the Government Affairs Department. Uh, they are putting the final touches on our policy booklet. And as soon as those are done, hopefully this week or next week, um, we will have that booklet up on our website, again, texasrealestate.com. Is recapture going to be a topic, uh, especially after Houston rejected recapture? Oh, absolutely. But, but he, you know, I think, you know, regardless of what happened in Houston, I think you know, the legislature indeed was going to discuss uh, school finance anyway. I think the real question, though, Ward, may be, <clears throat> will, they act, will they do something about it? I'm not so sure that they will because, again, going back to my earlier comments, whenever you talk about school finance, you're talking about billions of dollars, putting, putting billions of dollars back into the system or into the education system, and those dollars just are not there right now. So it still remains to be seen if the legislature will uh, make some headway with recapture and with the school finance system as we know it today in Texas. Uh, but, again, I'm not so sure that they will have any final make any final decisions uh, by the end of the session in 2017. Do you know of any legislation uh, currently filed regarding title insurance, and if so, who's sponsoring it? We don't know. We, no, right now, there has not been any bill filed um, on title insurance. We are hearing some rumors on who may file those bills, and if indeed the rumors are true, I would tell you that more than likely, it's going to be good for us because those individuals that are being talked about who may file these types of bills have been and continue to be realtor uh, supporters, realtor champions. So whoever files these bills, if they do, uh, we will have a great relationship with those legislators, both in the House and the Senate, 
and to make sure that your voice is heard across the street uh, in the state capitol. Uh, can we expect any changes on HOAs? Maybe. Uh, I know we, you know there are certainly a lot of things uh, deal related to HOAs that we hear about every single year. One of the most egregious examples that we continue to hear about all across the state is the cost of the resale certificate um, uh, that HOAs or management companies are charging upwards of eight, nine, eight, nine hundred, maybe sometimes even a thousand dollars. I think the legislature definitely is very aware of, of some of these egregious fees that are being charged, and the legislature indeed may take a look at some of these HOAs. And, and one of the issues they may look at is making sure that certain information indeed is filed with the state to make sure that we understand or the legislature understands one how many HOAs uh, or condo associations are out there uh, and uh, how people can contact you know those, those associations as well as to make sure that you know ample information is made available uh, to the state like how much is the, re the cost for a resource certificate what are the annual or semi-annual or quarterly assessments uh, that are charged by HOAs or condo associations so great question I think they will be look at some issues dealing with uh, property associations. <coughs> How does a realtor get involved uh, with your committee? Great question. Uh, what, what you need to do is we actually have an open process every single year, and we open that process. Uh, t tend, it tends to be in that May, June time frame, but people can certainly sign up on our website, texasrealestate.com, and, and uh, you know, choose which subcommittees they would like to, 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 to work on. Subcommittees like <clears throat> the Business Issues Subcommittee, the Taxation Subcommittee, Property Management, whatever it may be. But uh, you can go to our website, TexasRealEstate.com. Two more questions, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, what <coughs> does TAR foresee with regard to statewide measures on short-term rentals and TNCs? Oh, a, a double bonus question. I like that. <clears throat> so... I think what we may see on those short-term rentals or rental registrations are things that um, make sure that people can do with what they want with their property when they, when they choose to do it. I like to always say, and I have said all throughout this year, that people don't want to uh, rent their property because they just want to rent it. A lot of them are doing short-term rentals because they're just trying to pay their tax liability. They're trying to pay their property tax bill. I think you will definitely see some things that the legislature looks at uh, during the next legislative session as it relates to short-term rentals as well as rental registrations and uh, rest assured that we're going to follow every single one of those bills. In terms of TNCs, Transportation Network Companies, I, I believe a, a bill or bills have already been filed <clears throat> relating to uh, Uber and Lyft being able to operate in certain cities or all across the state of Texas. Um, I think we actually have a, a number of bills that have been filed and I think you'll continue to see those bills filed. I think from a legislature standpoint, they just want to make sure that, one, the consumer uh, is protected uh, during that ride, but also to make sure that these companies indeed can exist in Texas, because indeed that, that, could, that is the next uh, or the future of the, uh, of the economy uh, in Texas. One more question, Warren? One more. Yeah. We're going back to title insurance. Uh, we have, why should Texas taxpayers have to pay such high title insurance rates compared to other states? Yeah, great question. And actually, the subcommittee looked at that, and, and what the subcommittee found was that there's, it's not a true apples-to-apples -apples comparison of, of rates. Uh, I think the other side has been putting out some information about, well, title insurance rates of X are you know, higher than Texas rates. But what the subcommittee found was that that, that information was not accurate. Uh, it was fake news. What the subcommittee looked at was <clears throat> part of the title insurance rate uh, only included the rate, but did not include abstract fees or any attorney's fees as well. So it wasn't a true apples-to-apples -apples comparison of what other states charge for title insurance versus what Texas charge. If you looked at all of the fees that are charged or that, that encompass the title fee here in Texas, ultimately what the, what the subcommittee found was that those rates are very competitive uh, and in line with where we are here in Texas. Thank you again very much for your time and attention, for getting up early uh, and, and joining us for this legislative preview of the 85th Texas Legislature that begins again on January 10th. And I would be remiss if I did not remind you, please put on your calendars, that Realtor Hill Visit Day is April 4th. Is that correct, guys? April 4th. Put it on your calendar. And we are expecting you 
to bring not just yourself, but another colleague or two or three, we hope to have 4,000 realtors strong here on April 4th of 2017 for Realtor Hill Visit Day. Again, thank you very much. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.